Good morning. Hi, my name is Nick Kirkman. I'll be doing a demo on how to do portraiture. Um, and I'll be giving some in extra information on drawing skills generally and how to do analysis. I'd like to say thank you, first of all, to Peninsula Art Society down on the Mornington Peninsula for giving me this chance to do a demo during the zombie apocalypse. I uh, hope you guys are all safe and looking after your each other and staying connected and staying creative. Me too. So I'm going to start off with introducing the subject, which is actually not this line. It is the lovely little Ava. So this is my friend's granddaughter and she's cute as a button and we're going to be analysing this through a, a series of, of methods. And this demo will include number one, a demo, uh, which will show you how I do the initial blocking in, uh, identifying roughly where features go, um, how I do corrections before I commit to where edges are going to be. I'll show you some skills and tools for analysis, which I will use fairly loosely and then go on correct later. Uh, in the process, I will specifically be showing you how to use a boundary box. I will give you a little introduction to some of the things you need for drawing, which wonderfully is a really short list and a really inexpensive list. Um, I will also do some work on form shadows and cast shadows so you understand what you're looking for that will give things shape rather than feel like a cartoon. I'll do a little tutorial on things to look for with eyes, noses and mouths, including teeth. Um, but in the process, I will also then add some information about form and cast shadows regarding regarding those features. So uh, I should at this point say, although I'm going to do this stuff on mouths and noses and, and teeth and stuff and eyes, um, it is useful to know the formulae, uh, but I'm going to show you a way of working that means you can uh, forget the formulae, but it just gives you an awareness of what to look for. So the first thing I'm going to show you is, or talk to you about, is the idea of the boundary box. And for this we do need our little line. So your boundary box can be the size of your composition, but it can also be for any feature you're struggling with. If I just put him on a funny angle. So I like to use the boundary box as representing the furthest left object the furthest right object, <laughs> the lowest feature at the bottom, Ooh, funny angle, and the highest feature at the top. And if that's of the whole object, then we get these rather nice little negative spaces, which we can then analyse. So we've got something that's not far off a squarey rectangle there. We've got a little triangle here, a little triangle here, a roughly square here that's got some good kind of stuff going on. We've got a little triangle here and a little kind of funny triangle here. And when we use the boundary box, the idea is not to draw the thing within the boundary box, but to actually focus on these negative spaces because they share an edge with the thing we want to look at. And when we do those, we don't just do square, triangle, triangle here. We relate these features horizontally and vertically to our sticks that are the outside. So I start noticing that this paw is halfway up. Oops is halfway up my boundary box. I start noticing that the edge of the face is about a third of the way in, and we've got another two thirds. I start noticing that the paw 
is just over halfway across the bottom. I start noticing where corners are. So I notice that corner and that corner and this corner. And that actually helps me do triangles accurately. It's worth noting that we humans are really good at verticals and really good at horizontals. We can often get those within a couple of degrees, but any angle in between, we start to go a bit squiff. So you can even apply your boundary box to an angle. So let's say I was doing, ooh, actually before I say that, one of the other things to be aware of that us humans are pretty good at and pretty bad at. If I try and do the proportions of features of this lion, just with reference to the line and paying attention to whatever I pay attention to, I might make certain features longer because I know about, I know that nose is quite long um, and ignore the foreshortening. So if I, I've lost language skills again. I will lose language skills regularly during this and it's worth knowing that when you're doing colouring in, I mean art, uh, you will also use language skills regularly. So um, if I'm looking at a feature, I may get the proportions wrong. But if I'm looking at a rectangle, finding the proportions of a rectangle is actually something we're really good at. So if I, if I want to represent this, this angle, if I imagine there is a rectangle around that, say what, I'll just do that. If I imagine there's a rectangle around that, it is really, really easy to go, okay, I know where that corner is and I know where that corner is and I can do that angle. There's a few other ways to get angles well, but this is, this is a really nice method. So, I think with that, we can leave, oh, I'll say that. Uh, not only can you do boundary box for uh, the whole thing, or individual angles, you can also do it for individual features. So, actually, I'll get this guy. These guys are great. Got this from seniors. So if I pick on his nose, but not pick his nose, because you know, hygiene and zombie apocalypse. If I do that, oopsies. Oh, oh yeah. So you want to just flatten it. Here, here. So we know he's got a triangular nose. But if we stick the boundary box on it, making sure that it's uh, parallel to vertical and parallel to the horizontal, then instead of just doing the triangle, which we might level up, uh, we can see this triangle that's missing. We can see this triangle comes to about a third of the way down this boundary box, just over. And then we can see this triangle here. And that helps us get features like this, because it is really worth knowing um, when you're doing a portrait, the gesture of the head, the angle of the head, sets the mood of the piece. So a combination of whether or not it's straight up and sideways, but also whether or not it's straight up and three quarter profile, all of these things kind of set the mood for the piece. And one of the things we humans really struggle with is we know certain things. So we we don't see with our eyes so much as we see with our minds. We see meaning. So we know faces are symmetric and they know that they're basically upright. So what we tend to do with portraits is we straighten them up. And if they're three quarter profile, we tend to symmetric them up. So with that, I am going to start picking on Eva. Ava. Oops, sorry. Sorry, Mara. Right. I've initially got this picture of Ava 
in a plastic sheet. The reason for this is twofold, so that I can, um, no more, do things accurately whilst I'm under pressure. No pressure. Uh, and number two is so that when I remove this, you can see it was a lot less inflammation. I'm going to do a few of these so that you can see the kind of things that I'm looking for. Um, we will be doing, we will be referring to the outer box and during within the demo, we'll also be looking at some smaller areas. So for example, at this stage, I will be looking for things to block in. So I start noticing that these proportions, so that gives me a nice little triangle for this area and I can block that out. Uh, I've got a nice, little tri a nice little kind of, I don't even know what you call that, uh, rhomboid uh, there. I've got the basic thing for the hair here. Um, I should at this point say, not that interested in, in tracing. So I will simplify things. So I want to know why things tie up vertically. So I'll simplify stuff with that. I want to know where the hair comes to and relate that to there. I will also look for some corners. Um, this version, I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to do a bit of tracing because later on I will use this to help me establish that I'm getting stuff in roughly the right area. So, dee 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 Okay. So, as much as possible, if you can represent some things with straight lines, that will be dead handy. In a moment, I'm going to point some things out. We. Oh, squeaky. Nothing to hear. So, me. A bit more detail than I really need. Oopsies. So, so simplify with straight lines of the cost. Okay, so that's going to give me a rough idea of where things are, and the reason I'm doing that version is because later on when I check, um, and this can be a good idea for you to do in the early stages, um, I can put it over the piece I'm going to do because I'm actually going to work at one-to-one -one scaling. But that then basically simplifies this picture out into this, which I can cope with and probably you can cope with. And then later on, doing some additional stuff. Actually, I'll point something out at the moment. This looks like a fairly straight on portrait. But we can start to notice already that this side of the face, there's slightly more off on this side of the face. So she's slightly turned to the side. Oops. 
tell you why actually, that's a first timer. So I'm just going to stop that. Intermission lion. And then I'll start showing you how we transfer this over onto the next piece. <laughs> 